Hi everyone, uh, in this video I would like to share with you a tutorial on how to optimize cabling or piping routes by tray capacity. This is obviously of relevance to perhaps MEP engineers who are trying to route cables or pipes uh, through a building and they have maybe an existing building or an existing um, installation and uh, they have remnant or, or resultant uh, capacities for the trays that can carry pipes and they would like to find the optimal uh, routes for those pipes. So basically the challenge is that we would like to define, be able to define different capacities for cable trays and define the desired sources and destinations for cables and then have the algorithm find a series of shortest paths that respect those tray capacities. So here is an example that I did in uh, Jupyter Notebook using Topologic Pi. Uh, obviously, this is a very simple example just for clarity and you could almost solve it by hand. But here we have a network uh, of uh, cable trays uh, that goes from a certain source, like in this case that orange circle that you see here on the left uh, called V1, uh, all the way to three destinations called V4, V7 and V9. And the cable trays have different widths and different capacities therefore. So for example, edge 1 has a capacity of 3, uh, edge 2 has a capacity of 1, edge 3 has a capacity of 1, edge 4 has a capacity of 2, and so on and so forth. So the idea is how do we route those three cables because we are, we are going to go from V1 to V4, from V1 to V7, and from V1 to V9, so we have three cables. How do we, how do we route those things? So you can almost like solve it by hand, so let's, let's just try to do that uh, visually. Uh, so basically, if we would like to go from V1 to V4, we can consume one of the slots here in E1, and then we will consume all of E2 and all of E3 and go in a straight line from V1 to V4. So when it's turn for the second cable to be routed, it will obviously consume the second slot here in E1. It will find that it cannot go over E2 because that has been consumed already. So it will turn the corner on to E4, it will consume one of those two trays up uh, to E6 on the incline and then over to E7. Now when it comes time for the third cable, it will consume the third and last one of E1. Again, it will find that E2 is not available, but there is one slot available in E4. So it will turn again, it will also find that you know, E6 has a capacity of one now. So it will go there and then it will turn the corner down E8 and then over to E9 to reach its destination. So obviously this is a very simple graph, simple network that we could solve uh, by hand. But you can imagine if this was much more complicated, multi-floor, huge building, uh, you have cable trays everywhere, it will be very difficult to solve it by hand and you would like an algorithm to do that. So let me show you how we solve this in uh, Topologic Pi. So let's start from the beginning here and I'm going to restart this notebook. Okay, we are ready. So uh, as usual, the first step is to import all the libraries uh, that you might need in your uh, definition, in your script. So we will run this. The second uh, step is to define the geometry. Now, obviously we could have had uh, something that we imported, like a line drawing of some sort. In this case, I'm uh, creating it from scratch using the nine vertices and then nine edges that connect these vertices. And these are just simply uh, the coordinates of these vertices. So let me go ahead and run this. Okay, that's done. Now we have nine vertices and nine edges. Uh, so the next step is to uh, define the capacity. So what we're doing here is first of all we are creating a dictionary by key value i've decided on the name capacity you can name it whatever you want and gave it uh, the actual capacity as an integer number and then i assign this dictionary to the edge that needs that capacity so e1 has a capacity of three e2 has a capacity of one and so on and so forth for all nine edges so now i have a list of edges uh, that that have those capacities stored in them Great, so now let's just visualize this graph. So basically this cell is only about uh, creating a graph and visualizing it. 
So basically G is the graph. So G is equal to graph by vertices edges. We don't really need the vertices. So I put an empty list here because all the vertices can come from the edges. And edges is this list that we have created earlier. So basically we run this one and then let's go ahead and run this one and I'll, I'll continue with what it is. So basically, as you can see here, I'm creating a plotly diagram uh, where the width of the edge is, corresponds to uh, the dictionary value that uh, it stores, that it has. So basically, uh, I loop through all the edges in G edges, which are the graph edges, and then I get the dictionary of an edge, I get the width of it, which is the value at key capacity, and then I create a plotly data so that uh, I can store, store that edge and draw it later on. Once I have uh, accumulated all the data that I need for plotly, uh, I basically create a figure from this data and then I show this figure using a, an orthographic projection. So you can see here uh, that these widths correspond to the diagram that we had before. Let me just remind you of that, which is this one. It's exactly the same thing. This is 3, 2, 2, 1, 2, and 1, 1, 1, and 1, which is exactly what we have here. Great, so we have this graph. So now how do we actually uh, finish this algorithm? So the first thing to do is I have a definition here that I will be calling uh, where, where that updates the capacity of the edges. So it returns a list of edges but with their capacities uh, updated, basically decreased by one if they are being used. And if they are obviously, um, uh, if they have reached zero, if they have been all consumed, I don't even add them to the list of uh, edges that are to be returned. So the graph will actually remove them completely uh, from its network. So basically, what do I do here? So I basically loop through the edges here, this one, and I get the, the dictionary of that edge, and I get the capacity of that edge. Okay, I assume there is a value at key capacity. And then I decide if uh, the edge that is, you know, I'm questioning here is actually the same. So I decide if the length is less than, uh, the, the difference of the length is less than tolerance, so they have the same length, basically. And if I subtract one from the other, I get none. So basically, those are two of, and this, you know, two of the same edge, basically. They are exactly the same. They have the same length, and if I subtract them from each other, I get nothing. So obviously, they are uh, coincident. If that is the case, I decrease the capacity by one. And if there is still a remnant capacity, there's still a positive number, then I create a new dictionary with this new capacity that has been decreased by one. I set it to the dictionary in question that I'm looping through and I append it to the return edges. Okay, so now this edge goes back in the list, but with a decreased capacity. If, um, if it's not, if this edge is, has nothing to do with the, with, the, with, the, with the edge that I am going through, uh, then it basically just adds it as it is. That means this is not an edge that has passed through this edge. It's not the same one. Therefore, I just add it back to the list of return edges and then I go ahead and return those edges. Okay, so how is this uh, being used? Basically, this is the last step. Uh, so I create a uh, graph by vertices edges from the original edges, and then I get the edges of the graph, and then I specify what are the needed paths. And I will come back to this because the ordering here is important. But basically I'm saying that I need a path from V1 to V4, I need another path from V1 to V9, and I need another path from V1 to V7, okay? So it will go through these, you know, uh, desired paths, and it will try to create them. So I start with initializing an empty list called found paths, and then I loop through the needed paths, okay, which are these. So it will loop three times. I get the starting vertex and the end vertex of the needed path. So SV and EV are basically in the first instance will be V1 to V4. I will find the shortest path by length from SV to EV within the graph G. And if there is such a thing as shortest path, I append it to the found path. All right. And then I get the edges of it, of this uh, shortest path that I just found, 
and I loop through the edges and I update the capacity. All right. So for e for every edge, I'm uh, updating uh, g edges, uh, which they they either have lower capacity or they might go away altogether. And I create a completely new graph from these edges once I've gone through one path and I I did all the uh, capacity updating. Uh, I create a new graph, and this new graph might have fewer lines or might have lines with uh, lower capacity. And so when I come back to the loop and I'm trying to get the shortest path of G, from G, this G has now been updated. This graph has been updated with the new edges that I got here. And it goes here like this every time, as I said, capacities are being reduced or and or edges are being removed and it's trying to find the shortest path. And if it finds it, it adds it to the list of found paths. And that's it really. So now what I'm gonna do is draw them and I'm gonna split or kind of uh, offset them a little bit, excuse me, in the Z so that you can see them. So these are called display paths and I go through the list of found paths. And for each one of those, I translate it uh, up in the Z by you know a little bit, 0 0.1 times I so that I can see what what that is. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, I have something wrong here. Let me just check. Ah, because I did not run this uh, cell. Sorry, I skipped it. So let's run this cell and then this cell. And here we go. And you can see here are the three paths and this is what it decided to do. So let's go through this uh, a little bit and I'll show you how the ordering uh, makes a lot of difference. So basically, uh, the very lowest one at the bottom, uh, as you can see here, the one that goes straight through from uh, V1 to 2, 3, 4 to V4, uh, goes straight through. And because it went through this edge here and it consumed it all, the other two edges had to kind of make a right turn and go through uh, these other paths to, to find it. And that is because, uh, as you can see here, V1 to V4 uh, is... Uh, the first one that was computed and it had no competition it, it had all the capacity available to it the other two had reduced capacities that they needed to contend with so what happens if we uh, change this so let's go ahead let's say take uh, v1 and v9 or actually let's take v1 and v4 put it at the very end so i'm going to exit out of there and uh, let's go over here and put it at the very end and let's go ahead and run the whole uh, system again And here we go. So now you see it's a completely different uh, result because uh, the first one consumed uh, this edge, which is a bottleneck basically, uh, and went down to where it's supposed to go, which is V9, I assume. Yeah, V9 was the first one. Uh, then V7 came through. Uh, it couldn't go over this edge, edge two. It turned the corner and found its way to V7. And then, unfortunately, the last one, rather than finding the shortest path possible from V1 to V4, also had to turn the corner, do kind of like a detour, and come back up. So I just wanted to show you that uh, the ordering of the cabling is, is important and can give you either an optimal or a suboptimal uh, result. So just make sure they're listed in order of uh, priority. What cables have higher priority should be at the at the beginning of the list so that it gets uh, solved uh, quickly. And that's it really. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I hope this was clear. Uh, I will try to put this Jupyter Notebook uh, on GitHub so that you can find it there if you would like to learn from it. Thank you for watching.